powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Oweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We we'll rejoice and be glad. You are welcome to All Nations Crusade and today is day 34. We have been here sharing God's word and bringing forth the truth of God's word. And yesterday I was teaching on Get Delivered. I did part one yesterday and I got people texting me, telling me about you got to continue with our teaching on Get Delivered. And I also have a, a, a peace in my spirit to continue. So we're going to look at this very important uh, as we study the subject. I've been told someone I'm going to have a school called the School of Deliverance because there are a lot of things going on today in the body of Christ that people are, are just ruined because of wrong information. So we needed to get some insights. Uh, now, today we'll be talking about Get Delivered, Part 2. The first thing we need to establish is that liberty is the will of God. Liberty is the will of God. We are called into a life of liberty, not a life of bondage and captivity. For most people, as a result of being ignorant of God's word, have accepted things they shouldn't have accepted. Lack of knowledge is one of the major weapons of Satan. As long as a person is ignorant of God's will, they can never experience true liberty. And what the enemy always wants to do to people is to keep them ignorant of God's word, then oppress them because of lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of God's word is the reason why people can exercise the authority. You cannot truly exercise your authority if you're ignorant of what belongs to you. You cannot enforce authority is action. Especially when it comes to the things of the Spirit, authority is the action in the direction of God's Word. So we cannot truly exercise authority if we are ignorant of the will of God. The foundation of authority is God's Word. The foundation of authority is God's Word. So when an individual is ignorant of God's Word, they cannot truly enforce their kingdom inheritance so today we're looking at you have liberty in this part two we you, you have liberty but being ignorant of your liberty can lead to oppression of the enemy you have liberty now let's look at galatians 5 verse 1 galatians 5 verse 1 in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. I'd like us to look at this. It said here, Stand fast, therefore, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Did you hear this? Is it Christ has made us free? The question is, if Christ has made me free, why do I have those experience? Why do I have those abuse? Why do I have those situation coming against me if Christ has made us free? Freedom 
can only be utilized by those that know they have freedom. <laughs> I said freedom can only be utilized or maximized by those that know that have the knowledge that they have freedom. So if you don't have the knowledge of your freedom, yes, you have freedom, but an enemy will come in knowing that you're ignorant and abuse you. And abuse you. This is why when you buy a car, they give you some documentation for the car in case you're driving on the road and the police flags you and says, Stop. They say, Can I see your car particulars like they do in my country? What do you do? You pull out the car particulars that begins to check it. If everything is okay, they say, Go. If everything is not okay, they keep you bound there. They begin to interrogate you. They start investigating you. Why? There is no clarity of documentation. The same way it works spiritually. When the enemy tries to drop something on you, then you got to remind him, I have liberty. I cannot receive this. This is not meant for me. My, my inheritance did not say I should receive this. Because you have the knowledge of your inheritance in Christ, you couldn't receive it. But there are many believers receiving it and accepting it and trying to get delivered from it. So they are battling with it for five years, they are battling with it for ten years, or knowing to them that the book said they have liberty. The book said they have liberty. But if the book said you have liberty, and you're ignorant of what the book said, a stranger will abuse you. The book said stand in the liberty. That simply means enforce. Enforce your liberty. If you don't enforce your liberty, then you begin to say, well, you don't know, Pastor, this is this this situation has been there for a long time. My father suffered it. You, you, you know, some people want to tell me, want to give me reasons why they are going through what they are going through. They want to give me reasons why they are going through this hardship, why they are being attacked. They, they want to give me reasons unknowing to them that their reasons is not the reason for them to be bound. The reason why they are bound is their inability to discover the truth. The reason that they give, they give that this is the reason why this is happening to me. This is the reason why that is happening to me. That is not the reason. The real reason why they are going through that is because they don't know what the book said, what God's word said. So right now they are subject to abuse, they are subject to humiliation, they are subject to oppression because they don't know what the book said. Look at Galatians 5 x 1. It said, stand fast. He said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Christ has already taken care of it. Christ has made us free. But the question is, do you know that Christ has made you free? When you got born again, you were born into the family of God to manifest the God life. When you got born again, you were born into the family of God to manifest the God life, to live the God life. You see, you were not born into the family of God to go through where you're coming from, to go through what you're coming from. You know, some people are going through depression, frustration, demonic abuse, all kinds of situations before they got born again. Now they got born again. And they are born into the family of God. And those experiences has continued. Now because of those experiences continued, they went to a preacher and said, why am I going through this? Then the preacher said, it's a generational cause. But the, the, the good news is, Galatians 5 x 1 said, stand fast in the liberty. What, she, what the preacher was supposed to teach her or teach him 
wants to stand fast in his liberty. He is not taking advantage of his liberty in Christ. Then the enemy begins to encroach. The enemy is encroaching on the basis that you are not taking advantage of your liberty. Then the enemy crosses the line. When the enemy crosses the line, you never rebuke the enemy. When the enemy crosses the line, you never said anything. When the enemy crosses the line, you started accepting it. And the more you accept it, the more the enemy brings it. The one thing about the devil, whatever you accept, he multiplies. Especially when you accept the wrong things that he's sending your way. So the more he sends it, you accept it, he multiplies it. He accepts it, he multiplies it. So he's, he's looking at for the day you will come to the knowledge that you have authority over him. But the way he comes to people, he appears to them to let them know that you don't have authority over me. I am the devil. I am so powerful. You can never have authority over me. So he talks to them that way. He begins to convince them. Do you think you can be free? You can never be free from me. I am your father. The devil begins to tell them. The demon begins to say that. I am your father. You can never go free. I will be with you. Nobody can deliver you. You are going to be here. The more he says that to them, the spirit of fear lays hold of them based on that spirit of fear they shrink in and begin to accept everything the enemy is telling them if they tell them to go and commit suicide they go commit suicide if they tell them to take a gun and go and shoot someone they take a gun so whatever he tells them because he has taken over them because they never stood fast in their liberty if you don't know how to exercise your authority in Christ, you'll be bound. You see, what happens is in the body of Christ was that a lot of people, like one of my spiritual daughter was saying today, that some people say they have the ministry of deliverance only to teach the people to become co-dependent on them. So the people keep coming, always depending on them for prayer. Well, I want to be delivered. So they have an appointment for them. This week they will come. Next week they will come. You know, they, they, it now becomes a regular checkup. That is what you see in most places in the body of Christ. So you see people always on the line trying to be delivered. For the past five years, she has been attending that deliverance program. So she has not been delivered. So they keep giving her promise that the demon is so strong. We need to fast more. We need to do this more. You need to do that more. So they are always trying to be free. But they never get free. Because that is not the method of getting free free. The more they do those things, they enrich the preachers. They, they keep giving. They keep trying to believe that one day they'll be free. So he keep giving them the hope you're going to be free one day. You know, this demon is a special demon. This demon have this price. This demon is like this. So they begin to make the people live in slavery. The reason why things like that are done is because most of the people don't know the word of God. Most of the people are ignorant of what the scripture teaches about their liberty in Christ. Most of the people don't walk in the revelation of who they are in Christ. As a result of that, what we are seeing is believers being bound. Believers looking for liberty. Believers looking for when will I be free when will i be free so what do you do about it the first thing to establish is that i have liberty this is the first thing you need to tell yourself if you're bound by anything if you're going through anything the first thing you need to establish is the liberty mindset in christ I have liberty. Galatians 5 verse 1 said, Stand fast in the liberty. Therefore, therefore, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty we are with Christ has made us free. It says, Stand fast in the liberty. So I have to stand in the liberty. How do I stand in the liberty? I stand in my liberty by faith. By faith, I stand in my liberty. By faith, I receive my liberty. By faith, I believe in my liberty. By faith, I enforce my liberty. When I believe in my liberty, it will lead to the transformation of the mind. 
Now, because most of the problem you have came was in your mind. Most of the way you think, you reason and believe was issues that took place in your mind. So the mind has to go for reprogramming. Is wanting to cast a demon from someone. If their mind is not renewed with God's word, the demon will come back and become stronger than them. This is what most people don't know. When you cast that demon from a person, the demon is seeking for a dry place, but it's going to come back to check if the place is empty, and then the demon will come in. So this is why you need to renew your mind with God's word and be able to resist. That is why the Bible said, resist the devil. The Bible said, give no place to the devil. The Bible said, cast out the devil. If you watch the words used, resist the devil, cast out the devil, Resist the devil, give no place to the devil. We need to walk in the knowledge of God's word to be able to operate in our dominion. We cannot truly operate in our dominion when we're ignorant of the revelation of who we are in Christ. The revelation of who we are in Christ is the revelation of liberty, is the revelation of authority, is the revelation of power, is the revelation that you are in charge and you can decide what happened to your life. So in Galatians 5 verse 1, it says, stand fast. So who is to stand fast? I am the one to stand fast. And how do I stand fast? I stand fast by the word. I stand fast with God's word. You know, Colossians 3 verse 16, he said, let, this, let, let the word of God dwell in you richly, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Now, a lot of people seeking for deliverance don't have time for God's word. They forget the word of God. They, they abandon God's word, not knowing that the true deliverance will come through the word of God. In Psalm 107, verse 20, Psalm 107, verse 20, he said, He sent forth his word, his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. It is the word of God that heal. It is the word of God that delivers. It is the word of God that set free. He sent forth his word. The word healed them. The word delivered them from their destruction. So one of the ways to be delivered from destruction, to be delivered from oppression, is by the word of God. So what the enemy likes to do to people is that he wants them to be ignorant of God's word. Because God's word reveals your authority. God word, God's word reveals how powerful you are. God's word reveals what you can do. So what the enemy wants to do is to disconnect you from the word. Because if he can succeed in disconnecting you from God's word, then he can keep you bound. So it doesn't matter how you pray or how you struggle to be delivered, you are still being bound. Because the deliverance begins in your spirit, man. And how does it begin in your spirit, man? It is by the word of God you receive in your spirit, man, that energizes you to declare your victory. So if God's word is not in your spirit, man, no matter how you pray, no matter how you try to be free, you cannot be free because you need a knowledge. A knowledge produces an awareness of what you can have, what you can receive, and what you cannot receive. So revelation, which is God's word, comes into our spirit and equips us for our faith work. So when I receive the revelation of God's word about who I am in Christ, what I have in Christ, what I can do in Christ, my level of boldness increase to confront. Now I can say, Satan, get thee out in the name of Jesus. On what ground am I saying that? Because I have a revelation of my sonship. I have a revelation of my authority. I have a revelation of what Christ has purchased for me. And now I am functioning in that knowledge. So back to Galatians 5 verse 1. It said, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. This is so powerful. It says, stand fast in the liberty. So we have liberty. I have to stand fast in my liberty. And he told me, don't entangle again with the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? What is the yoke of bondage? The yoke of bondage can be likened to being ignorant of God's word. 
The yoke of bondage can be likened to be sin. The yoke of bondage can be a lifestyle that is not based on God's word that can open the door for this enemy to come back into our life. He said, don't entangle yourself again with sin, with ungodliness, with a lifestyle that is not based on God's word. Some people are in the church serving God and at the same time their one leg is in the wall behaving like unbelievers. Such people are at the mercy of the devil. This is why you have to be born again. Being born again is the first step to being free. Being born again is the first step to being free. The second step is to renew your mind with God's word. To know what God's word teach about who you are in Christ. The third step is to use your faith to stand your ground against anything that wants to stand against you. This is how it works. Get delivered. But two, he said, so it's a stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where which Christ has made us free. So Christ has made us free. Christ has made you free from every form of wickedness or oppression. Where the Bible said in, fact, in, in John chapter 1, verse 12, He said, As many that believe him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. As many that believe him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. We, have, we, we are born into the family of God as the sons of God to manifest the power of God. When I look at some people and they want to take liberty, they want to enjoy liberty, but ignorance has held them bound. And the strength of the enemy is in the area where you're ignorant of God's word. Can I say this to you? We have liberty. Let me show you something in Colossians. Colossians 1 verse 12. Colossians 1 verse 12. It said something. It said, giving thanks unto the Father. Colossians 1 verse 12. It said, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13 said, Colossians 1 13. It said, who has delivered us? Who has delivered us? Can you believe that scripture? He said, who has delivered us? He didn't say he's going to deliver us. He said, who has delivered us? That simply means your account has been credited already with deliverance. That you have been delivered. If you go and check at the book of God, what reads in the book is that she's delivered. Is she still going through that? <laughs> That's what they would say. She's delivered. Is still she is still is she still going through that? Because in the scripture here it reads that John is delivered, Paul is delivered, Andrew is delivered, and now you heard John said, "Demon came and abused me. I'm still going through this. I'm still suffering from this. This spirit is still controlling me." But they went and checked the book and they said John has been delivered from the powers of darkness. But you went back to John, and John said, I'm not delivered. Wow. That is the experience that many people are having. The book said delivered. They said bound. The book said free. They said they are not free. You know why? Because they have not been taught how to live by the book, which is the word of God. This book, which is God's word, leads us to the author. This book, the word of God, lead us to the author, which is God. So he said here in Colossians 1.13, he said, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Wow. Who has delivered us? Who has delivered us? Wow. Can you read that more than 20 times for yourself today? Who has delivered me? I am delivered. I am not bound. I am delivered. I am set free. I am free. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? And then he said, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Who has delivered us? And right now we are in the kingdom of his dear son. Wow. So what are we expected to do? We are expected to function from the kingdom. 
We are expected to think from the kingdom, to walk from the kingdom, to do business from the kingdom, to, to never... The kingdom subjects authority, rulership, dominion, power, glory, or honor, blessing. The kingdom. He said we are in the kingdom. He didn't say we're going to be in the kingdom. He didn't say we're going to enter the kingdom one day. He said we're already in the kingdom. And because we're already in the kingdom, what are you expected to do? Rule. Rule. If you're not ruling, it means you're not functioning in the revelation of the kingdom. If you are not ruling as a child of God, it means you are not functioning in the revelation of the kingdom. If you are still saying what your mother's side did, what happened in your father's side, your, your what your happened to your great grandmother is still affecting your life, that means you are not living in the kingdom. If you are living in the kingdom, it means you are ignorant of your rulership in the kingdom. Because the kingdom people don't consult what happened to their fathers, to their mothers. No, because they are the seed of Abraham. They are of Christ. So now they are born into the kingdom of God. And what they expect to do is to rule. Is to rule. Is to be in charge. Is to enforce their dominion. And how do you enforce your dominion? Is when you walk according to the word of God. When you begin to function from the knowledge of his will. Now, I want to show you something that is quite amazing in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 16. Ephesians 1 16. He says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Let's look at the content of the prayer in verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He was praying for them. That God will grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation is because of lack of spirit of wisdom and revelation in the lives of so many believers today that is the reason why you see them being oppressed you see them being humiliated you see them living a life that is not based on god's word because they don't have this verse 18 said the eyes of your understanding being enlightened and because their eyes of understanding is not being enlightened, what they do, they begin to pray prayers like this. Whatever that is coming from my mother's side will never get me. Whatever that is coming from my father's side will never get me. I used to tell people that that prayer came from Africa. That prayer started from Africa. It started from Africa, especially from some churches in Nigeria. That is where it started. That is the origin where it started. And it, it has spread like a wildfire all over the world. So you see Christians today, they are praying, whatever that is coming from my mother's side, whatever that is coming from my father's side, it was as a result of what most Africans went through. So they begin to pray that way, thinking it was scriptural. Then the rest of the world follow through without checking out their Bible. Are we supposed to be praying the mother side or we're supposed to be talking about who we are in Christ? So you saw there was a major wind that came as a result of that kind of prayer into the body of Christ and it infiltrated everywhere all over the world, all over the world. That was how powerful it was that now you see Christians, they are going for checkup. When I say check up, not hospital, to churches, they are going to be, for them to check on them, if there is something they got from their mother's side, from their father's side. Let me say this to you. In the kingdom, we don't talk about hereditary. We don't talk about what you inherited from your forefathers. In the kingdom, we talk about our inheritance in Christ Jesus. That's what we talk about in the kingdom of God. There is difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. They are not the same thing. You are not expected to live like an unbeliever after you give your life to Christ. I'm here to say to you, people of God, it's time to get back into the word of God and check out most of the prayer points you're praying if they are really consistent with God's word. Just that something is popular doesn't mean it is correct. Just that something gets attention of more people doesn't make it scriptural. Can I say this to you? As long as you're ignorant, you will never enjoy liberty. 
as long as you're ignorant of God's word, you will never enjoy liberty. There are a lot of Christians today, if you look at them, they are drying up. They are drying up. They are not looking the way they are supposed to look. They are, the way they look, you wonder what's the problem with them. Because religion has twisted their mind. Religion has robbed them the joy of living. And this is why you see most of God's people today in tears because they lack knowledge. In Isaiah 5.13, Isaiah 5.13, he said, My people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. My people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. So why the captivity lack of knowledge of God's word? So Paul was praying for them here that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling. The eyes of your understanding. If you don't know the truth of God's word, you will keep chasing the enemy. A lot of majority, some Christians today, 80% of their time of prayer, they talk to demons than they talk to God. They talk more to demons, they talk more to evil spirits, they talk more to things then they talk to God. Prayer was meant to be a relationship. And from that relationship, we can enforce the kingdom in different dimensions of our life. But the truth of the matter here is that because most people are not rooted in God's word, they are easily responding to deception, manipulation, and witchcraft. Get back into the word. Get back into those Pauline writings. Get back to amassing yourself in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Galatians, in the book of Colossians. Get re- reading those Pauline writings. Meditate on the book of Ephesians until everything sinks in you. I don't care if the book of Ephesians is the only book you read for one year. I don't care. Read it until you have everything in it. Read the book of Ephesians until you wear it into you. Look at for where he said who we are in Christ, in whom, in him. Begin to look at for those kind of scriptures. Who we are in him. What we have in him. Look at Colossians. Look at Philippians. Look at Galatians. Look at Romans. Begin to sink your life into those scriptures. Begin to meditate on who you are in Christ. This is your answer. If you live this way, your confection, your attitude will change. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching this broadcast around the world. Be healed, be delivered. In the name of Jesus, may the knowledge of God's word come to you like a flood, like a flood, and overtake you in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every addiction and I command it to be set free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, it means you're born again. And because you're born again, you can live the life of dominion in Christ Jesus. So the Holy Ghost is going to lead you from here. Hallelujah. When you're born again, the Holy Ghost will lead you from here. Now, if you're watching this broadcast, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. And when you subscribe, you'll be able to receive the revelation of God's word. That will empower you to make a difference in your walk with God. And also, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. When you subscribe, you will never remain the same. Also, we encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. True partnership, this truth of God's word will spread across the globe. Helping more people to receive God's word every day so you can partner with us on paypal or through money grammar western union on paypal is faithman teaching at gmail.com and also we encourage you to stay connected to this teaching ministry because it has a lot to say to you hallelujah and also you can send me friends requests on facebook on facebook is faithman obweather on facebook uh my second page is faithman obweather ministry on Facebook, so you can connect with me. My official page is Apostle Faithman Ogwada, and you can stay connected and you will never remain the same. Thank you for watching this broadcast. On the like, come your way sometime soon.
Don't forget, there is greatness in you.